hey what is up YouTube welcome to another video this is going to be a second follow-up video of this Sega Radiohead unit that I upgraded a little while ago I made a video of this upgrade and I would pin it on the top right if you want to check it out and after that video I also found out a few things about it so let's get started all right so driving and listening to music and then out of nowhere I started hearing this So I'm stuck with this like that and I have no idea what to do. I can mute it. I think in this kind of cases there should be a way to restore the, the head unit without um, having to shut down the car and restart it. You know, because if I'm driving and I don't feel like pulling over and restarting my car. I should be able to restart it. I see they have a, a reset button right here that you cannot reach. You have to use a pin to uh, reach it, which is not convenient. So this one happens rarely, but sometimes you can put the car on reverse and the screen stays blank like this for a few seconds before switching the rear view camera on, as you can see here. So another thing is when you turn off the car for like a couple of minutes and then you turn it back on, sometimes your uh, music player will not respond for some reason. As you can see here, I have a song that I was playing before I shut off the car and it will not communicate. I think this has to do with the file system that is uh, not able to reconnect to uh, the downloaded music player. I think that a software update can probably solve this issue and when this happens I have to close the program completely and reopen it that's the only way to get it back working so the next issue is with the radio as you can see here I think it has a very nice user interface but I would like to always have the channel frequency on every tile as you can see here instead of having the name of the radio and the name of the music playing currently the first one you have radio p13 i guess that's for the 13th channel but it would be great if i had the channel frequency written on top of it with the name of the radio but instead of that, I only have the name of the channel and the title of the music playing. The next problem is being able to uh, move your apps and put them wherever you want. As you can see here, when I try to move an app to the first three pages, it's just impossible. As you can see, I can try to drag it over as you can see impossible I can't put it nowhere in the first three pages so I have to rely on the fourth page and the following pages if I have more apps installed imagine if I had like eight pages ten pages maybe twenty pages because you can install many application as you want as long as you have space for them but every time you're gonna have to scroll all the way to the fourth page in order to uh, be able to customize the apps uh, which is uh, a bummer I think I should be able to put the apps wherever I want to alright so next is uh, the fact that I never thought that I would miss the volume knob because the OEM uh, radio head unit used to have a volume knob that you turn to decrease the volume but now you have to deal with these touch buttons as you can see here it's not so bad but if you accidentally blast your volume you will find yourself struggling to go back to lower volumes like you have to come here you tap this and then you can slide it down luckily you can just go ahead and tap and it's gonna jump straight to where you tapped so that's good and you can also run to the power button right here and tap it and it's gonna mute everything which is also great 
but uh, yeah I do miss the volume knob even though it's not so bad alright so next issue is the home page this is basically static there is nothing you can change here you have your clock I feel like this is basically wasted because how many use a car for a, an alarm clock I can't think of anyone who would need that they should allow the user to hold it and it's gonna take you to the widgets maybe so you can pick your own widget but instead you cannot edit it at all same thing with this this is music takes you to this music player which I never use you have to literally download the music onto your head unit in order to use this player A waste of time I should have been able to hold this and change this to uh, a custom music player that I downloaded but it's impossible luckily for the navigation if you have Google Maps installed it's gonna go ahead and use Google Maps which is very nice and then the radio has a, a great UI as you can see it looks very good press home this would keep the radio playing in the background but if you are in the radio and you press the back button it would go ahead and turn off the radio the brightness adjustment in reverse so to adjust the brightness you just drag this down you tap the brightness icon and here you have the brightness slider but the second you put the car on reverse as you can see if it's too dim you cannot pull the slider down so you can increase the brightness you have to go back to normal mode so you have to exit the reverse before you are able to adjust the brightness it's a small detail I thought I add in here so another thing that I found out not so long ago is that the unit also support uh, multitasking. So if you open your app, let's go ahead and open an app. And as you are in one of the apps, you can go ahead and press the recently opened app button. And as you can see, one of the apps is resized to the side and now you have uh, your app selection to the right and you can go ahead and launch one of them and as you can see you can have two apps at the same time and when you put the car on reverse as you can see the backup camera only pops up on one side nice so to all of this you can also add file system limitations like not being able to use a uh, a downloaded file explorer to manage system data as you can see this folder right here is not empty as it says but just because I'm using a downloaded uh, file explorer it's not gonna let me manage system files I think this is the one they want you to use but it's very very limited it won't ask you if you want to override or rename the new files you're copying over it just renames it which is a mess and this is the file that I'm trying to copy into the file system and it's not gonna let me so that's just uh, not it so let's go back to torque so I want to set up custom PIDs so I'll go to the settings then I select extra PIDs and then I go to the options import CSV file and as you can see this is the CSV file that I want to import into the torque pro app from the USB drive you can go ahead and select it and as you can see nothing is happening it's not able to communicate 
with the storage for some reason and here is a problem it proves that it's a file system issue to turn off the screen you can also press and hold the screen brightness button there is a cross in a box as you can see here you can just press and hold and as you can see that's gonna turn off the display and to wake it you can just stop so you also have uh, built-in apps that gives you uh, information about the car as you can see like the vehicle app right here and this one gives you few information as you can see and uh, also the tire information even though it gives you the tire pressure in kilopascal and then you have uh, another app called control settings right here and as you can see it gives you quite a lot of options as you can see it's quite a lot of settings you also have a TV projection app right here really nice if you're into that and also the built-in GPS app is really really advanced but I found it to be a little bit uh, sluggish it's very slow sometimes and freezes a lot I don't know if uh, there is a new version available to update it to but as you can see it's really slow and sometimes it freezes as it just did let's wait all right we are good it's a really nice GPS app it's just like uh, it takes a lot of resources from the head unit and you can even uh, mirror your phone using this mirroring app as you can see here you can project your phone onto the head unit either by cable or wirelessly as you can see and as I mentioned in the last uh, follow-up video you have your Android Auto right here and Apple CarPlay they support both wireless and uh, wired connections you can connect it either from your main port right here or the two auxiliary ports that I have in the uh, glove box in my last follow-up video I mentioned that the head unit also support keyboards and mice and uh, that was a wired keyboard and a wired mouse well as you can see it also supports a wireless mouse and a wireless keyboard you can just connect the USB dongle to the USB port right here there are two extra USB ports also in the glove box they also support the USB uh, data connection you can spin the wheel to switch the pages as you can see it makes it a lot easier to use the head unit and if you want to type anything you can also go ahead and do that as you can see it works with no issues so one of my viewers also asked if it supports a wireless gaming controller I haven't tried that because I don't have a gaming controller handy but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna work uh, this is running Android 5.1.1 so i'm pretty sure that the gaming controller is going to work as well here is the notification panel and as you can see it's a little bit boring i would have preferred the brightness adjustment to be on top right there instead of having to press the button it should have been right here so i can just increase or decrease the screen brightness but for some reason you have to tap the icon and then adjust it you also have this SD card notification that is always here for some reason I wonder if there is a external SD card connected to the head unit I haven't checked it before uh, installing the head unit but it's always here and as you can see you cannot uh, disable it these notifications can be modified but you can dismiss it and now it's clear for uh, other notifications but every time you start the car you're gonna have it there I think that since it's a head unit 
they could have maybe disabled that notification because the SD card is always going to pop up every time. Alright, so this is going to be it for this video. If you have anything else to add, please leave it in the comment section and also engage in the comments. So make sure to drop a question if you have one. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.